All right, this is going to be a little bit different of a video than I normally upload to this channel. And the only reason why I'm doing this is because a lot of people ask me, how do I go about rendering all of this stuff, considering I only have a laptop? Well, today I'm going to go ahead and benchmark this laptop using Cinebench. And I'm not going to uh, bother with the OpenGL uh, rendering like you see here because that's primarily for graphics cards and this just has built-in graphics on the processor which you know it always sucks so I'm only gonna benchmark the CPU now I want to keep want you to keep in mind that the majority of the rendering unless it's something that requires a tons of memory or tons of bake files uh, I do most of my rendering on Sheepit, which is a community-based render farm. But whenever I do have to render myself because the bake files are just too huge to upload, or it requires more memory than a lot of the systems on Sheepit will have, then I have to do it with my laptop. I'm going to run the Cinebench CPU benchmark with it set two different ways. First, I'm going to have it set to 2.6 gigahertz, which is what the normal clock speed is on this processor without automatic overclocking. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because that's what I normally render at because I don't like overclocking for extended period, periods of time. For one reason, the processor will run extremely hot. And then I will run the uh, same benchmark again with it overclocked. That way we can see the difference. Alright, I got this uh, over here open so you can keep track of the temperatures. The temperature is in red and right now it's running 38 degrees C, which is fairly cool. Of course it's idling. And keep in mind again, it's it's not overclocked right now. Go and go ahead and start the CPU benchmark. And just to let you know, the processor inside this is a i7-4720HQ. It's a four core, two threads per core. And in my opinion, it's not that bad of a processor, especially for a laptop. Now, Pretty much any modern desktop processor would, you know, run circles around this, but you're kind of limited on how much you can put into a laptop due to how confined the space is and how hot the processors will run. But again, it's not too bad, in my opinion. You can see the temperature right now has it's up to around 61 62 about 61 or 62 degrees C is what it's gone up to which is perfectly safe I, I wouldn't have an issue with running it at that temperature all day long all right it's, it's got a 496 centibench score which, you know, for a laptop, considering I only paid $500 for this laptop, not bad. Now, I'm going to go ahead and overclock this. Now, the processor is capable of overclocking to 3.6, but uh, only two cores I can get to overclock to 3.6. The other two are 3.4. So I'm just going to overclock all, all of them to 3.4. and then we'll run the same test. Keep in mind it got a 496 when it wasn't overclocked and we'll see what it gets when it's overclocked. And we'll see what the temperature gets to. It's already got already up to 71C, 72, 73, 74, 75. 
76, 78, 77. And that's still a safe temperature, but it will continue to climb if it's used for an extended period of time. Up to 81, 79, 80, 83. And in my opinion, once it gets into the mid 80s, that's too hot in my opinion. It's, it's not hot enough to damage it, but I don't like running it that hot. So that's why I generally do not overclock unless uh, it's just for something short like this. Alright, that raised it from, what was it, 492 up to 647. So a 647 centibench score on a $500 laptop. In my opinion, not that bad. But anyway, I just figured I'd uh, um, share this with you. And if anyone's interested in, you know, checking out Sheepit to help you render, I have a video, a tutorial talking about that. You can click on it. The link to that's in the description of this video. Anyway, thanks for watching. Later, people.